Welcome to the Spokane and Coeur d'Alene housing market update. It's May 2024. In this video, I'm going to bring you the facts that you need to know about the national and local real estate market because whether you're going to list in a week or you're going to buy in two years, it's important to understand not only what the market is doing at this point in time, but also what the general trends are. There are also new landlord laws you're going to need to pay attention to. So if you're a landlord in the area, you're going to want to stick around. My name is Phil Wells. I'm a real estate agent licensed in Washington and Idaho that likes to keep up to date with the market and I want you to be as informed as possible too. In this video, we're going to start by getting a national overview of what's been happening by looking at pending home sales, mortgage rates, mortgage application rates, as well as national median home prices and national inventory. We'll then compare that national picture to what's happening here locally in Spokane and Coeur d'Alene. After that, we're going to look at some of the top news articles in the nation this month so that you can be fully up to speed. Before we get going, I know there are a lot of realtors out there to choose from, but if your goal is to sell your home and net the most while doing it, reach out to me and we'll explore how selling with me allows you to net more on your home. Looking first at the most recent data that we have for pending home sales, which outline sales from March. Contract signings were up 3.4% on a month over month basis from February into March. And the figure we're really interested in that year over year figure shows contract signings were up 0.1%. That's a very positive report. I have only seen positive year over year growth once or twice in the past couple of years. So even though it's only a 0.1% gain, this is a hugely positive report. Here's what the National Association of Realtors chief economist had to say about March's pending home sales. Pending home sales in March marks the best performance in a year, but it still remains in a fairly narrow range over the last 12 months without a measurable breakout. Meaningful gains will only occur with declining mortgage rates and rising inventory. He goes on to say that inventory will grow steadily from more home construction and various life-changing events will require people to trade up, trade down, or move to another location. He also says that home prices are expected to rise roughly in line with consumer price inflation and wage growth over the next two years. Most homeowners are in a strong financial footing in current market conditions with only 2% of sales classified as being distressed. So this economist touching on various points there, all of which are sounding very positive. Let's move on and look at mortgage rates. Obviously the majority of people buy a home with the aid of a mortgage, so it's important to understand how much that loan costs at any given time. Sticking with March for a second so we can really analyze that period in time. And of course, we are looking at the 30 year conventional mortgage here. Mortgage rates at the start of March were at 7.08% and by the end of that month, they were at 6.91%. So not much movement, pretty much right around 7% the whole month there in March. Since March, rates have since risen around a quarter of a percent to where they are today at 7.25%. The most recent data that we have does show rates beginning to fall in May, but it's too soon to tell a trend just yet. So what about mortgage application rates? This is exactly what it sounds like. We need to know how many people are actually applying for loans. We were seeing mortgage application rates holding relatively steady in the run ups that most recent quarter percent interest rate hike. But when they did rise, as we expected, mortgage application rates fell off too. Why should we care about this? Well, it shows us that the basics of supply and demand are working, even at 7% mortgage rates that are buyers out there. So if you're a seller, know that the market isn't completely stalled, but there are understandably rate sensitive buyers out there. So keeping an eye on mortgage rates will help you out as a seller because you will be understanding your eventual buyers key demand drivers. Let's move on and look at the national median home price and let's look at what's happening with national inventory. National median home prices in March were $420,000, which is up 4.8% on a year over year basis. And inventory is currently sat at 3.2 months worth of supply, which is up slightly from the prior two months. Homes are remaining on the market for around 33 days on a national basis. 
So there's a little bit more inventory heading into spring and summer and homes are selling for more on a national basis. So let's summarize that national picture that we just outlined so we have something to compare our local markets to. Pending home sales increased 3.2% on a month on month basis and they're up 0.1% on a year over year basis. Mortgage rates are back up to around 7.2% mortgage application rates continue to behave as we'd expect, going up when mortgage rates decline and down when mortgage rates rise. Home prices are up 4.8%. Inventory is set at a 3.2 month supply and homes are taking on average about 33 days to sell. So let's look at the Spokane market and see how it compares to that national picture we just painted. Sales were up 5.9% on a year over year basis, which is far better than the national year over year increase of 0.1%. So very healthy sales happening here in Spokane. Median home prices are up 3.5% on a year over year basis to 430,000. Again, broadly in line with the rest of the nation, though it must be said that Spokane is beginning to move ahead of the nation in terms of pricing. It's only $10,000 right now, but we don't want to see Spokane begin to edge out ahead of the rest of the country. Inventory remains very low and is at a 1.8 month supply. Local inventory then is substantially lower than the rest of the nations, which increases competition among buyers and continues to work in your favor as a potential seller. For buyers, it will likely mean some frustration along the way and the need to shop for longer to find the right home in most cases. New listings are up 20.3% on a year over year basis, which is a substantial boost. People are starting to list their homes for sale here in Spokane as people are taking note of the strong demand in the area. You can see days of market of seven days, that's significantly lower than the rest of the nation's 33 days on market. So things are heating up here in Spokane. So overall, Spokane is more pronounced than the rest of the nation. It's starting to feel just a little bit competitive here. It's not wild, but there are definitely more buyers than sellers right now. So if you are thinking about selling into this market, give me a call and learn how you can net more by using me as your agent. So while the rest of the nation may be looking like something of a balanced market, here in Spokane, we're looking a little bit more like a seller's market. Let's see how Coeur d'Alene is shaping up compared to the rest of the nation. Actual sales were up 20.3% on a year over year basis, which is a substantial move upwards. One thing that the Coeur d'Alene MLS does, which is great, is that they provide a year to date sales figure. Sales are up 9.1% in the first four months of the year compared to the first four months of last year. So you can see we have really positive growth here in terms of sales in Coeur d'Alene. And you can see those sales figures are outperforming the rest of the nation in a big way. Median home prices are down here very modestly 0.97% to 510,000 still well ahead of the rest of the nation's median of 420,000. Inventory is set at 1,637 units, which is up 23% from this time last year. And absorption rates, also known as months of supply, is currently at 4.5 months worth of supply, and that trend is going up. Days on market in the Coeur d'Alene area are currently 91.3 days on market, and that trend is heading downwards. So when comparing Coeur d'Alene to the rest of the nation, whilst the rest of the country looks to be in something of a balanced market, here in Coeur d'Alene, you could argue we're in somewhat of a buyer's market, but that price continues to remain steady. So yes, while you can probably buy the home that you want to buy, you are still paying that premium to live in the Coeur d'Alene area. If you're curious what the right price to sell for is, give me a call, we can go over the comps so you can fully understand where your home sits in the market and what it's likely to sell for. Now I wanted to touch on a few of the news articles that stood out to me this month. As always, if you're interested in reading these articles in their entirety, the links to them will be in the description to this video. The biggest piece of news this month continues to be the Federal Reserve and interest rates. Jerome Powell this month kept interest rates where they were, but the messaging at the Federal Reserve is really starting to change. 
Just last month, he was talking about maybe three rate cuts in the next year, but now he's quoted as saying, I think it's unlikely that the next rate move will be a hike. He also added that inflation is too high and the path forward is uncertain. So we're no longer even talking about rate cuts. Now inflation is too high and the future is uncertain. I'm personally not expecting any rate cuts at all this year. Next, for something I've said before, but I'm gonna say it again, I understand that affordability when it comes to buying a home is a huge concern among the buyers out there right now. But as I've said before, it simply doesn't pay to wait. And this article highlights this beautifully. The average US home price could spike 20% if the Fed cuts interest rates too soon. So if you're thinking you're being smart, you're gonna sit on the sidelines and wait until mortgage rates are 5%, 4%, maybe even 3%, please remember there are a lot of people doing that right now and you're gonna be in for a shock when you come to buy a home and realize that you're paying 20% more for that home because you chose to wait. Think about it this way, if you want to buy a $500,000 home now, that's gonna be a $600,000 home when you're finally ready to buy it. Next, for some inland specific news. Like I mentioned at the top, Spokane is changing its landlord laws once again. Now you must give 120 days notice to increase rents less than 3% and 180 days notice to increase rents more than 3%. In my view, this is a great way to guarantee that rents increase every year. Because if a landlord can't react to a specific price hike when it comes to their costs, for example, we just saw insurance rates hike massively across the nation, then they are gonna increase rates just in case to have that safety margin in case something happens. The same thing happened in jurisdictions like Los Angeles and New York where they have similar policies. This is just another example of ill thought out policies when it comes to landlord tenant laws in Spokane, but I suppose it sounds good when it comes time for election. Obviously there are two sides to any equation and from a tenant's perspective, this does give you more time to move or to renegotiate that rent increase if you choose to do that. Next up, the Spokane Arena is closed for three months to undergo a $10 million renovation. The Spokane Arena is one of the Inland Northwest's top venues and attracts top talent from all over the world. So I'll be excited to see what they do with this place. Lastly, Spokane was voted one of the top vacation spots in the United States and one of the top places to live in the country as well, all in the same month. So the Inland Northwest's major city there going from strength to strength which is a huge boost for the whole region. That's it for this video. I hope you gained from the video. If you did, please like and subscribe. That really does help me out. If you are looking at buying or selling in the Spokane or Coeur Lane area, please reach out to me, give me a call, shoot me a text, send me an email, and I'd be honored to work with you. Until the next video, my name is Phil Wells, and thank you for watching.